Hermes drawn near and to my prayer incline, in arts gymnastic and in fraud divine. Dire weapon of the tongue which men revere, be present, Hermes, in thy suppliant here. Welcome to Third Eye Bind, episode 13, Familiars. Hello, I'm Laura. And I'm Caitlin. And welcome to Third Eye Bind. Episode 13. Familiars. Familiars. <laughs> Familiars. <laughs> so if you like us, which hopefully you do, um, <laughs> if you could please like, subscribe, repost, share, rate, review, mm-hmm. and If you really like us, uh, you can support us on Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash third eye bind. We would love it. Check us out. We'd appreciate (laughs) that. So let's get to it. Yeah. Let's get to it. Let's start the way we always do with a card pool. Familiars. One more shot. One more shot. Okay. That's it. What is it? It's the perfect card. (laughs) It's the fool. And... Oh! Oh, you even included animals in this. Uh, Yeah. There's little animals. This is perfect. There's little Star Wars animals. The the fool card (laughs) on my deck is Weird Al in the second edition. Mm -hmm. Weird Al Yankovic. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, it's his song, <laughs> his parody of American Pie. Uh, it's a Star Wars version mm-hmm. of that. So, that do you remember when it was on the radio for a while? Yeah, mm-hmm. it's really good. Mm-hmm. What what lyrics are? There? Uh, so he left his home and kissed his mommy goodbye, singing soon, soon I'm gonna, gonna be a Jedi. Jedi. <laughs> Soon I'm, Ooh, gonna I'm gonna be, be a Jedi. Jedi. We gotta finish it off. <laughs> but the fool is the fucking perfect card for this episode because number zero, the first card in the tarot, features not only our main character, the person who travels through mm-hmm. the major arcana, but also their familiar. A little foofy doo doo. A little foofy doo doo. And in the Smith Weight version, Come here, little foofy doo doo. Baby. My little foofy doo doo's here. A little fox. Come here. In the Smith Weight version of the tarot, the fool is accompanied by their loyal companion, a dog. And the dog is warning them of the danger that's ahead. The dog is barking, nipping at their heels because they're about to literally walk off a cliff. And (laughs) (laughs) I think it's really sweet and also so magical. Like tarot is so fucking magical. The way that they give us exactly the card we need. Like this is the perfect. Truly the perfect card. Mm -hmm, The perfect introduction. It's the one with a dog on it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So what the fuck is a familiar? What the fuck is a familiar? Well, Mm -hmm. the term familiar came about I found during the 1500s, mm. along with anti-witch laws. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Um, so f- uh, it's called, a f- uh, it's basically uh, an animal or a human or a spirit that aids in witchcraft mm-hmm. or aids a witch in their magical doings. Mm. Um, so it's called familiar because these are, typically things that are in plain sight. The guise of a familiar is a pet, an animal, a cat, a person. That it's, it's, uns- it's sort of uh, blends in and you wouldn't know it, hence it's familiar to you. Mm. Familiar, it's really about the person perceiving the familiar as being familiar. Mm-hmm. It's like a hidden Demon. Hidden in plain sight. It's interesting that you said <laughs> demon because when yeah. I was doing my research on familiars, I learned that in ancient Greece, they called their familiars daemons. And daemons were these loyal house spirits who assisted whoever was casting or praying. And that word was later 
changed to demon and became what Christianity turned demons no into, which made me kind of wonder, like, are demons evil or are they just loyal to their household? Which means, like, if you cross somebody, they might come for you. Right. So that's the origin of the word demon? Mm-hmm. Comes wow. from Damon. Mm-hmm. Huh. A familiar. A familiar. Mm-hmm. So we all love a good anti-witch law, right? <laughs> well, familiars were often, um, often when people were accused of witchcraft, they were on the fringes of society. They were different. They had, they were women that had brains. <laughs> uh, and used they them. Were, and <laughs> they were old people that mm. sometimes talked to their cats. Right. <laughs> It's the crazy cat lady trope. Mm. These people were accused of being witches simply because they would speak to their animals things that were presumed to be lower than themselves or in society like, you crazy mm. motherfucker, you're talking to your cat. You mm -hmm. must be, it must be witchcraft. You mm. must be bad. And these were often people that were just old and lonely. And they were accused of being witches and they were often seen and then their cats or their dogs or their rats or whatever were their familiars and they were the ones that were aiding them in their their witchcraft and their their demon work and their how sad is that that makes me mad <laughs> isn't that sad yeah it makes me want to cry <laughs> no really like that's no it's really sad like <laughs> like just Puritanical yeah. Christian culture yes. pushes elders out of the picture, out of the way, casts them out. And then like when they talk to their pets because no one else wants to talk to them, they're like, you're a fucking witch. And this is our proof. Like, that's And now so we'll kill you. Up. And we're going to go hang you. And now. we're going to go hang you now. Yeah. Oh, my God. I hate it. <laughs> so that's when the ter the term familiar yes familiars and, and companions were around again through multiple societies but that's when we and assigned cultures. it but that's the word familiar that's when it sort of mm. came so it's not a word that us as witches or as pagans or as whatever sort of came up with we it didn't was, give it to ourselves no it was a term that was deemed unto us mm. in a not so wonderful but it wasn't always like Terrible, mm -hmm. but it was like that's what they were called because they needed to they write needed it to, fucking down again, and make it a demonize the mm -hmm. it was demonized. So, there's this great guy called Matthew Hopkins, and he wrote a great book called The Discovery of Witches, and that's the witch hunting guidebook basically. And so, in that book, he, um, you know, he's one of those fuckers from around then that yeah. hunted witches. He, uh, included familiars in his book and demonized them so he mm -hmm. said and watch out for those cats and those dogs and mm. things like that um because they're evil and they're helping the witches they're and helping then those witches and back then those viewpoints mm. were considered as lawful as science is to us today like that was like oh sh well that's that's it mm -hmm. and so that affected like political and socio views and like a lot mm -hmm. like it was like okay so that wasn't wonderful mm. um but yeah familiars were are and and were seen as little beings of uh, animals uh, in Scotland, Fay could be familiars, mm -hmm. and even people mm -hmm. could be a familiar that would aid you in your witchcraft and give you power mm -hmm. and guide you, like the fool and mm -hmm. like the fool card with the little dog and uh, warn you of danger mm -hmm. and things like that. So that's sort of the origin of the word itself. Mm -hmm. But it seems like familiars have been around since yeah. long before yeah. this word, which mm -hmm. is interesting. Mm -hmm. It kind of takes me back to last week and how we talked about the way Christianity warps ideas and words, language, to scare people away from doing things that come really naturally to them as 
spiritual inhabitants of planet Earth. It definitely feels similar. When I was doing some research last night, something that I stumbled upon specifically in regard to cats is that cats like serpents were animals associated with feminine gods, feminine goddesses. And that definitely got intertwined into like the Mm -hmm. evil, wicked demonization of the black cat and cats in general as the helpers of the evil witches. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 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 not something that's exclusive to America Mm -mm. by any means or any stretch of the imagination. Um. But it's a lot, to, you know. It, these are these weren't people that were actually witches that are being uh, throughout history. No, it never is. Ninety five percent of the people that were accused of being witches were not witches. No. That's not what it was about. It was about politics. It was about social status. It mm-hmm. was about hating your neighbor mm-hmm. and judging them. It was about jealousy. A lot of anti semitism. A lot of racism. Mm-hmm. Um, I know, and and familiars were wrapped up in that. Like if. Uh, they were killed and they were, you know, like they were like you were killed, but they mm-hmm. were also killed or they were banished. Punished too. They were punished and they're just innocent little creatures that are just like, huh? <laughs> what? What the fuck? I, I just, just love this person. They feed me. <laughs> I, it's like that. And it's the demonization of a relationship with an earth spirit. Mm-hmm. An animal. Uh, to me, animals are like the purest form of of anything to me because they're not human. Yeah. So to me, it's like they're just they can do no wrong. Heaven to me. forbid a femme has a pet. <laughs> Heaven forbid a spinster has a pet. Seriously. <laughs> That they love enough. I mean, that people probably think I'm fucking insane with the with the. I would have been killed real fast with the shit I do to my dog, like kissing its mouth and immediately, it like, immediate. Just no, a childless thirty five year old. Mm-mm. No, no, in those and an times, interracial marriage with a with oh, a dog no. baby. No, all of you no. done. All done in the fucking forties. I would have been done. So. What does that say? Mm-hmm. But <laughs> that's another story. It's a different episode. That's a different episode. <laughs> but, you know, even in like the Salem witch trials, mm-hmm. um, Tichuba had a bird, I believe, and a dog. Mm-hmm. Familiar, allegedly. And so did Sarah Good, who was, you know, accused as well. And she had birds. So it's like bird lady... Like, the lady from Home Alone 2 would have been just out of there. Done. She's, like, prime. Mm. That's a good example Too of, old. like... <laughs> yeah. That's a really good example of someone who would be accused of witchcraft, is, like, the pigeon lady from, from Home Alone 2 lost in New York. Mm-hmm. So these... Yeah, it is it is very sad, because even that's how little fun you could have with these Puritan fuckers. Like Literally. Literally. Yeah. This came up last time, too. It's just... Somehow we keep coming back to them. <laughs> Somehow. There's a thread here. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so... Anyway, That was some really good historical yes. and cultural context for familiars. Um, I actually didn't know that that's when the word got coined. Yeah. So that's really it's interesting. It showed up in the 1500s. What's your relationship to familiars? My relation, well, I have pets. I'm a pet person. Mm-hmm. I'm a pet mother of non human entities. Mm-hmm. Okay. I have, I, this is the one episode where he's not on my lap. <laughs> but in every other fucking episode that you've, if you watch the podcast, you would notice there's a dog on my lap. His name is Fox. And he's just laying on the floor and it's fine. He's not here now. It's fine. He's a, maybe it's a little warm in here. I don't know. But um, so it's interesting because I think sometimes if you just have a pet and you're a witch, you're like, well, that's my familiar. Mm-hmm. And that's not necessarily the case mm. because I've like I've had multiple pets in my life and 
not all of them are like into your magic shit. Mm-hmm. Um, and I didn't, I, I did have a cat. I would have, I don't have a fucking cat and I'm a witch. I know it's, it's dumb. My husband is very allergic and I love him. So I respect <laughs> that. Um, <laughs> but I don't have a cat, but cats are great familiars. Mm-hmm. Because they're just on a whole nother level of not giving a flying fuck about you. So when they do pay attention to things, I feel like it's really, a, they're good uh, at um, discerning their attention to where mm. it's like, oh, you should pay attention to that. Okay, bye. Like, they're very good at communicating that. In a, and I think they're, con- all, all like animal beings are connected to the earth. But I find that dogs are more grounded mm-hmm. in wolf energy, and which is my preferred, I guess, vibage. Um, <laughs> I don't know how to explain that. I like wolf energy. Um, mm-hmm. Me too. I, I have it. a lot of dogs, and I find them to be more familial and in a way that it's like they're pack animals. Yeah. Cats aren't pack animals. No. Cats are like, looking into other realms and shit dogs are like connected to the energy of the like what is here what is now like grounded as fuck and very attached to their humans Mm -hmm. so fox is very attentive to me very attentive to me very protective of me (laughs) very protective of you a cat never was to me Mm -hmm. not that cats can't be but my experiences with with cats are more like they're equals (laughs) Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. (laughs) And dogs are more either protectors or your babies. Or both. Or both. Or both. Fox is both. Fox (laughs) is, like, very protective of me, which I appreciate. And I think that's the aspect of familiar vibe that he brings to my practice is protective. And he wants to be around it. And he mm-hmm. wants to just be on my lap and present with what I'm doing, which mm-hmm. is a sign of a familiar. So the the wanting and needing to be around you when you're doing, except for now, particularly, <laughs> he's a little itchy today, it's fine. The, like, that, the want of an animal to be near you when you're doing it is a sign that that's like... Maybe that's your familiar. Absolutely. Maybe that's more your than current. just a pet. It's more than just a mm-hmm. pet. So I guess my answer is I don't think every animal I've ever had is a familiar, but mm-hmm. I do think that you can try it out, you know, and sort of see. Some of them are more obvious than others. Mm-hmm. Like he's very clearly just in it to win it. He's like, I'm here. I'm silent partner. Mm-hmm. <laughs> He's, it, it makes me feel uh, more confident. And I think that's, that's a sign of, of a familiar as well as some, something that gives you more power mm-hmm. that comforts you to mm-hmm. let you enough to let. It's like an, an emotional support animal. Mm-hmm. That's, that's a familiar. Absolutely. You know. Um, and since we don't have a better word for familiar, we're going to keep saying familiar. Even Absolutely. Yeah. It's a fun word, and I've made merch of it. You're so. a little Damon Fox. He's a Damon. <laughs> Damon would be a cute name for like. It would be. <laughs> so anyway, what about you? Well, I cannot have pets because I am a renter in Los Angeles. Um, so for me, my relationship to my familiars, they're more of the astral realm and local animals. Um, So I guess I'll start with the local animals. For me, I have a really strong relationship with birds. Yeah. A really strong relationship with birds. And I think that's partly a Gemini thing. And also like birds are celestial messengers. And I'm all about listening to, Mm -hmm. I spend a lot of time listening to them chirping. In the mornings when my kids wake up, we're not allowed to turn on any noise. We open all the windows and we listen to the birds and what they have to say. And we make it a point to get to know every bird in our environment to the point that we like notice if there's a new one Mm -hmm. around. And we have a a murder of crows who hangs out around us 
whenever we come outside, they come outside too and fly around us. There are two hawks that come and fly around us when we play outside. And there's a hummingbird, Witsili, who hangs out right in front of our house. And those are our BFFs. And they are certainly my animal familiars in that I spend a lot of time trying to be in right relationship with the land. Mm -hmm. And because of this, because of my relationship to the land, these spirits came to me. The other bird familiar that I have is the turkey vulture, which is kind of wild. They're these giant vultures. They're black and their heads are red and they are, they're huge. They're huge. And you can see them all over California, especially if you're in a national park or on a hike somewhere. Um, And it's always when some sort of big transformational change is happening in my life that I come across one and they just fly like so close, so close to me and it's pretty magical. And what I found with my relationship with these types of animals is that as new birds present themselves, I'll spend time researching about them from a biological standpoint, less than like, what's the spiritual meaning of X, Y, Z? And when I do that, I learned so much about myself and the part of my journey I'm in. Like when we moved into this apartment where all of these birds are, um, there was, there were two blue jays, scrub jays actually, who were nesting there. And I learned that scrub jays don't parent alone. There's usually a couple other adult scrub jays that'll show up and help with the babies Mm. once they hatch, which I think is really tender. And I was very pregnant when we moved in and honestly freaking out. I was freaking out. And I had to ask for help from other adults to like help me take care of my baby so I could go to work. And my dad and my sister would come over every day and help with Hunter Moon so that I could go back to my job. And so I learned a lot about the scrub jays and about myself and what I needed to do for myself Mm -hmm. just by like paying attention to them. And then like I have a few different animal guides who come through. One of them is a leopard who just kind of showed up one day when I was doing these like regular meditations. Um, the owner of Minka Brooklyn had made this really cool flower essence called Reina de Noche Mm. and Queen of the Night. I was taking it every night and I would sit in meditation and this jaguar actually showed up. And what's interesting is that the jaguar is a spirit that in Mesoamerican culture is associated with the setting of the sun and the underworld. So I think it's interesting that this spirit showed up Mm -hmm. for me in that moment. And they're very much like a protector, high femme, very sharp, all that cat energy that you were talking about. Like they embody that. And then like, I'm also obsessed with toucans. (laughs) Oh. If I see a toucan (laughs) statue, toucan anything, I am purchasing it and bringing it home. I just bought another toucan at the 99 cent store. (laughs) I fucking love, I've never seen a toucan in my life. My dad comes from a place where they exist. All right. Um, (laughs) My dad was born in Cuba and there's a lot of like big beaked tropical birds there. Mm. And so... I don't know if that's my relationship with them, but like, maybe I want to decorate my house in toucans all of the time. Good to know. I'm obsessed. Isn't that <laughs> funny how there, it's that trope of like liking a certain animal, mm-hmm. being drawn to a certain animal, your sometimes your whole life. Whether mm-hmm. it's like I know someone that's really into pigs. Yes. <laughs> my mom and I are very into tigers. Yeah. And I have a tattoo of one of my, like, protector, like, spiritual guides Mm. is, like, a hybrid weird creature that I would see. And it's a tiger with, like, eagle wings. Fuck yeah. So I have that tattooed on my back. (laughs) So that sort of, isn't that, it's interesting, right? Because it's that doesn't mean that that's 
you're familiar sometimes you just like an animal and that's fine but Mm -hmm. then it's like well what does it mean if you sort of peek into that Mm -hmm. and and like right now for the past like two years i've been very into toads yeah very into very into toads and that does track ancestrally for me because I'm like all the Germanic things in Britain and there's swan. There's, you know, there's, there's bogs. bogs. <laughs> Scotland. I, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of fucking toads in that wet sort of totally cloudy environment. Okay. There's toads in a lot of places. I'm getting a big visual of the toad coughing up yes. the ring in Practical, Practical Magic. Magic. <laughs> and it's not frogs for me. It's toads. Toads specifically. Toad yeah. warty toads. That's my jam. And I'm probably that's where the origin of like toad. Well, that's not true. It's probably a lot of different places in the world. But one of them are like the toad witch trope is probably comes from like Britain and all that shit. Yeah. So. Yeah. Very into toads. I thought about owning a toad. I love them so much. It's kind of cool. I looked into it. Can you do it? Yeah. You can have a toad like yeah. in your, uh-huh. in like a terrarium? Yes, and it would be like a terrarium situation. Yeah. I'd probably have two. So they so would not lonely. get lonely. Yeah. You know, and you got to feed. There's a the thing. You got to feed them. Like crickets and shit? Crickets. And then what deterred me was like, if your toad's not feeding, you have to break the cricket's neck and then make it twitch weird so it'll eat it. And I'm just like. Um, look, I'll feed, I'll, I grew up with like reptiles. My uncle had a bunch of exotic <laughs> pets he wasn't supposed to have. So I'm not, I'm not against throwing some bugs and I'm not afraid of bugs, but look, do I need to break its little cricket neck? That's fucked, that's fucked up. Cause they want it to move, you know? They they like to see it twitching. Like, what if I get a toad that won't eat this cricket right? And then I got to do some gross shit and look, I get used to it, but that sort of threw me off. <laughs> It, it put a pause. Because you got to make sure that you can't be an animal hoarder. You got to make sure you can actually care take for care them. of this yeah. animal. Because I'm a very good pet mom. Okay, mm-hmm. I take it very seriously. I do not want children from my body. So I love animals like a lot. Mm-hmm. So. I yeah. think something that's interesting, <laughs> like we keep touching upon tropes and that brings up two ideas for me. One, mm-hmm. I feel like our culture loves to talk shit on like femmes who are hyper interested in something and something we see a lot of like in TV and film is like they go into a girl's house and it's full of like unicorn statues or it's yeah. full of dolphin statues and that's like a red flag and it's like let a bitch like something let Selecting. <laughs> just let them like something let just let, mm-hmm. yeah that's so true and even like like i mentioned earlier the cats, crazy cat yeah. lady just let her have her cat just let her just leave her and her cats alone luckily, if you can't hang <laughs> they're still made fun of luckily they're not accused of witchcraft and killed nowadays right but they are but they still become on the, the butt fringes. of the joke. They are butt of the yeah. joke. And sometimes they make fun of themselves, which is mm-hmm. great. Yeah, but we love that. But we love that. But it but yeah, it's still sort of talking to animals and having animals mm-hmm. and loving animals too much. Even me, probably people think I'm in dipshit for like saying that my pets are my kids. Because they are. There's always somebody who's gonna say I don't something. Fucking care. Yeah. So yeah, I have thought about getting a toe. I support this. I'll help you break the crickets next. I feel like I would be good at this. I feel like I could get past it. I might need a little support. I also, I'm like, what if it gets too hot for them? And what, like, I'm all worried, but then I'm like, oh, right. I would give the toad, like, the best life ever. (laughs) You would be a good toad mommy. I kind of want a cane toad. I've researched. Yeah. Some are, yeah. I mean, this is not a toad episode, but that's. (laughs) But it could be. Snakes. <laughs> reptiles can be familiar. This is not just cats and dogs. Absolutely. People. Reptiles can absolutely be familiar. Reptile mom, shout mm-hmm. out to you. Snakes are badass. Marcella Kroll is a tarot reader who has a an albino bearded mm. dragon. Bearded, bearded lizard. Dragon. Yeah. Fucking cool. Their name is Lord. So fucking cool. Oh my God, bearded dragons. I don't know if Marcella considers them a familiar, but they definitely seem to have like a a cool relationship. Yeah, it's a really neat reptile. Birds. 
what else can you own? I love tarantulas. Birds. Yeah. Ooh, like in the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, one yeah. of the ants. Yeah. Her familiar is spiders. A spider. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Spiders. Anything really that you're drawn to. Mm-hmm. All the, all of these animals have butterflies. Butterflies. Mm-hmm. They all have <laughs> properties to, to like to be learned from, and it's not mm-hmm. like you said just what you Google. Yeah. Because start- who's writing these articles? Yeah. Don't start by Googling spiritual meaning of. No. Don't. Don't it's do trash. that because. It's clickbait. It, it is, it's trash. It is trash. And a lot of the websites just copy and paste the other websites. It's the sh- same yeah, and shit. It, and <laughs> it's fine because sometimes things are, you know, well known throughout. And right. what well known means it's like been recycled enough right. to just be on the internet, right? But biologically, scientists have put in work to understand how these creatures mm-hmm. operate and you can learn a lot from an animal mm-hmm. by understanding how it behaves, mm-hmm. not just its its spiritual meaning. From it's like, well, mm-hmm. what is the spirit? It's like this generic spiritual meaning. Well, what does that mean in your culture? That's the thing. Yes, and that's where we get into like spirit mm-hmm. animals. Yeah, and that whole thing where it's like white people love to culturally appropriate spirit it, animals, and they hate it when you say something about it. Yeah. <laughs> And I don't even know if I'm not indigenous. I don't even know if spiritual anim- spirit animals are an actual thing <laughs> to all Native Americans. I don't think it is. From so what I've heard. I don't. The term spirit animal isn't. Yeah. Like across the board. But if you get into pre-conquest indigenous cultures, yeah. like we all commune with animals of our environment yes. in our own way. And what a lot of pre-conquest cultures in the Americas and also really globally, like pre-Christian cultures, because I've, it goes back to like Mesopotamia where mm-hmm. there are reliefs, carvings of I'm going to use the word shaman because I don't have another word because I speak a colonial language, but shamans putting on the masks of certain animals in order to embody their energies Mm -hmm. and their characteristics to assist them in their conjuring and their magic. And you see that all across the globe in different ways. And really like the spiritual properties um spiritual characteristics of the animal are the biological characteristics of the animal before like what we call science today even existed like pre-conquest and pre-christian cultures turned to how do these animals behave yeah observation observation how do they interact with each other the same thing with other species with the environment and what can we learn from that and how can we embody it how can we channel them into ourselves and into our magic what i found is like a lot of mask wearing and costume Mm -hmm. was common like all over the earth yeah um all over the and wearing of the animal's body parts absolutely and honestly sacrifice absolutely Mm-hmm. That's not a, a something in our modern ter- days that we need to do and that we choose to do a lot of the time. But actually, like, but animal happen. sacrifice is something that's still commonly practiced yeah. in a lot of diasporic religions. Yeah. And I think what's important to know about animal sacrifice, especially in those contexts, is that, one, the animals have a really fucking good life before the sacrifice it's not like your factory farm shit where chickens Mm. are shitting all over each other and like their livers are enlarged and shit no like these are animals that are tended to with care and love and raised specifically for this purpose Mm. and the entire animal is then consumed afterwards in a communal way nothing goes to waste no part of the animal goes to waste and i think that like christian culture does a lot of fear mongering around animal sacrifice but like we eat like we're american culture yeah. is all about fucking hamburgers and yeah. shit and yeah. like chickens on the table like I mean, how is that not how yeah how's someone, that different someone demonizing like the sacrifice mm-hmm. of an animal for a for a cultural purpose that's non-white yeah versus then going to fucking in and out right 
Right, exactly. Like, how does that make any sense? How does that make any sense? And I think our culture, American culture, has such a disconnection from, like, where our food comes from because we see everything, like, wrapped up in plastic with fluorescent lights on it. And so we forget. And so... Yeah. I do think there's something really cool about knowing an animal and, like, being in communion with an animal before consuming it. I feel like you're more grateful for your food when you have those opportunities yeah. you have more reverence for your food when that happens I'm sure I've never mm. ex- I know that you've experienced that mm. I haven't experienced that and that's something I struggle with because I don't I something mm. with animals being harmed bothers me so badly mm-hmm. like in movies and stuff and yeah. like it, it's emotionally hard for mm-hmm. me because I form attachments to them very mm-hmm. quickly and I want them to live, but I also do respect yeah. the hell out of that side of it because I've thought to myself, you know, because factory farming shit's like that shit's if we, evil. <laughs> if we raised our own animals and slaughtered them, mm-hmm. like a lot of farmers do and people mm. do, that would be better <laughs> than what we consume Mm -hmm. when I go to fucking in and out absolutely so I think it's getting past that emotional hurdle yeah and then finding the reverence for it that would that would be possible for me but it does like I'm not gonna lie like the first time you see your grandma like twist the head of a chicken you cry (laughs) yeah it's not that's a normal and then you learn about death and consumption right (laughs) then you learn yes exactly and you learn about the sacredness of life and also that like Mm -hmm. There's this understanding as inhabitants of planet Earth, like some animals simply understand, like this is also part of my role to like be the food. Yeah. And prey animals. Mm-hmm. They know that they're prey. Mm-hmm. Deer know. Absolutely. <laughs> I a, love deer. Yeah. They, they know. There's a fuck ton of them. Mm-hmm. And sometimes they got to go. There's a chapter of braiding sweetgrass, and it was also featured on a recent episode of Reservation Dogs, where they talk about the deer and how, like, you don't shoot the first deer, just like you don't pluck from the first plant that you find. And the right deer will know and will allow you to kill them will allow you to take their life and a good hunter does it in such a way that it's instant they don't feel pain and the same is true with like animal sacrifice Mm. like it's not something that's torturous which i think existing in a factory farm is kind of torturous um there's a lot more respect for the life of the animal and their experience with death and i do think that's important to mention Another trope that I think I see often in like Hollywood and film is this like master servant energy between the sorcerer or the witch and the animal. <laughs> I just thought of Jafar and Iago. Totally. Yes. Jafar and Iago. Iago is his familiar. Very much master servant. Mm-hmm. And I just don't think it's like that. IRL. No. There's way more like mutual respect we are both like an agreement to have this relationship there's a lot more power within the familiar yes they're they're not just there for the sake of being Mm -hmm. there they're there to add something to your Mm -hmm. magic of their own free will of their own Mm -hmm. free will and yeah, the, they're not just there mm-hmm. just to be there. It's not it's not aesthetic. No. There's a connection. There's some sort of there's something you're getting from them that you wouldn't have if they weren't there. Absolutely. You're benefiting from them. So you're benefiting in that they're giving you some sort of guidance maybe mm-hmm. like the fool card or attention. attention. They're curious. They want to be around you. They're curious. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're they're supportive. Mm -hmm. It's, and sometimes if it's a particular animal, like a toad in, I know in my ancestry has been used for like change changes and Mm. and um, that that I'm doing with my hands that I can't think of the word. Mani- not manipulative, like transformation. Transformation. Jesus mm-hmm. Christ. <laughs> Je- Why Jesus Christ? <laughs> transformation and um, 
journeys and things like that, like inner transformations, which is why I think I've been attracted to them lately. Um, but mm. that can be a very specific purpose that the, you know, the animals like mm. known to in your culture for, you mm-hmm. know, you're invoking, you're invoking that element. That. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like a bird, mm-hmm. air, it's flying like, mm-hmm. hello. <laughs> you know, if you're working yeah. with air, like a bird is cool. And like you said, you don't have to own the animal mm-hmm. for it for you to commune with it. Mm-hmm. Like you can't own a pet because of logistical reasons, mm-hmm. which is fine. You use what's around you, mm-hmm. what's on your, on the land that you're on, mm-hmm. and I think that's great. And that's a great lesson for people out there who are like, I can't have a pet. What do I do? Mm-hmm. You don't need to own an animal to commune with it, mm-hmm. and and respect it like even if you own a cat they're out if they're an outside cat they're doing whatever the fuck they want absolutely they don't you don't really own that cat okay no that cat belongs to the streets that cat belongs to the streets (laughs) and their own shit Mm -hmm. okay so ownership is not necessarily a requirement Mm -hmm. and historically it was just the animals that were around Mm -hmm. you know the land or you, maybe you invite that animal into your home and there's a closeness. I think that's where the ownership quality comes in. Yeah. But even still, like you like you treat your animals like they are your babies. Yeah. Not like they are your property. No. And I think that's something we see a lot of in television and film is this element of like almost like abuse by the wizard or witch over their familiar yeah. like this force and like it's just not it's just not like that no. <laughs> it's just not like that there's no. so much more respect and reverence and really like appreciation and love of our familiars they are our companions our family members even and I just want to like dispel that a little bit because we do see it a lot in like wicked witch type of ways and evil sorcerer ways. Yes, she's so mean to the monkeys. So mean to the monkeys. Those are not her familiars. No. Jafar and Iago had a better relationship, I think, than the wicked witch and her monkeys. He's kind of mean though. He's mean. He like snatches the beak. That's true. He did kind of abuse. But I feel like he needed him to do shit. He needed him. Like, yeah. Iago flew around and spied. Birds are good for that. <laughs> Birds are excellent. Ooh, which reminds me of, like, Game of Thrones, mm. which I only watched a little bit because too rapey for me. Yeah, I, I cannot. Watch it it's not for me. But I did watch that one part where, like, the youngest Stark, like, does this whole thing and then sees through the fucking eyes of the raven. Oh, yeah. Like, that's familiar energy. Yeah. And if you are, like, a really dedicated witch when it comes to your astral travels you can do that shit Mm -hmm. you absolutely can Mm -hmm. and i think it's important that if you're interested in that type of thing that you like ask permission of those animal spirits before you begin yeah should probably give them Mm -hmm. some bird seed or something leave them an offering exactly because ravens and crows will bring you things like they're very smart and you don't want to piss them off man Mm -hmm. there was a i remember hearing about a story of i'm still trying to befriend my crows in my neighborhood um, (laughs) i was yelling at them like i brought you food i love you love me it's like what (laughs) uh doves keep coming to me though those fucking us birds. too the like morning doves they like, keep ooh, nesting ooh. and then they suck at nesting and i'm like you suck at nesting <laughs> you suck here i have bird seed outside just sitting there Let for these fuckers you. <laughs> it's a whole thing of food and they don't eat it and i'm just like god damn it <laughs> doves but anyway doves what the fuck was i talking about crows and wanting to oh, befriend yeah. them so there's a story of this chick that she was doing that with the crows Mm -hmm. and it got to a point where she would walk down the street and they would follow her a maze but if anyone else went near her they would attack them (laughs) even more amazing radical (laughs) but like it was like a problem to where it was like her friends and stuff like they would just fucking attack people (laughs) 
How rad is that, though? That's the witchiest fucking shit. <laughs> and this is a not probably not a witch, just a person. Like, how badass is that? It's so badass. That is, like, every witch aspires to that Absolutely. shit. <laughs> That's badass. A murder of crows just, just hanging out, attacking anybody. <laughs> I read an interesting story about crows and how not only do they remember you, but like they will tell other crows about you for mm-hmm. generations. Yeah. And I read a story about a dude who was like fucking with the crows and pissing them off. And like they did not forget. And other crows yeah. in other places would attack him because the word spread. Crows are Fascinating. badass. Crows are badass. Crows are the largest. Crows and ravens are the largest of the songbirds. Mm. I've and spent a coolest. lot of time on YouTube. Haven't we all? <laughs> Just watching videos about Past crows. Years, just about crows. <laughs> so an interesting, another aspect of familiars is that humans can be a familiar, you're familiar. Mm-hmm. Kind that's of, interesting. Kind of like um, that's, Frankenstein and Igor. <laughs> kind of, yeah. I mean, that's something I don't have any experience with because I don't really trust anybody enough at all. Totally. But what an interesting, like, can your kid be your familiar? I don't know, but I definitely have joked a few times, and I think it comes from a place of sincerity. Like, my husband is my familiar. Ha! Oh, my God. He... That's great. Like, he's not the witch, but whenever he leaves the house, he comes back with some witchy shit for me. Right. Like, if he goes on a bike ride, he's like, I saw some spirits and I asked them if I could bring you this rock and they said yes. <laughs> That's great. He brings me a rock. <laughs> That's amazing. Or we'll yeah. go to the beach and he'll like collect shells with the kids and be like, take these to your mom. They're for the altar. <laughs> like he knows specifically. Mm-hmm. That's great. Mm-hmm. That's very cool. He brought me yeah. he brought me the thing that I use for my altar. Oh. He brought yeah. it to me and helped me paint well, it. There you go. And moved it into the house so I that we could that, have the altar. I think that makes sense. Uh huh. That's so great. I do think he's my familiar. <laughs> That's hilarious. My favorite pop culture human familiar is Guillermo from What We Do in the Shadows. Yeah. He's Guillermo also is, hilarious on TikTok. <laughs> he's so nice and cute. So cute. Yeah. I love that show. The house they film at is in Pasadena. Oh, is it? Mm-hmm. We drive by it. it. We drive by oh. it and go, it's the vampire house. <laughs> I love living in LA. I know. Fuck it's fucking cool. It's down the street, literally walking distance from the Halloween house. Oh, yeah. That's uh-huh. what the South Pass is. Uh-huh. Shoot all the good mm-hmm. houses. Absolutely. Yeah. So something else I found was that the familiars act as sort of symbols or of or expressions of a person's emotions Hmm. like without so not a scapegoat but like without that animal or that thing they couldn't do the things they they can act out in ways that they normally would feel like they couldn't act out Hmm. And what comes to mind is like protecting themselves. Mm -hmm. It's like the animal, let's say it's a snake. The snake gives them, they project their emotions onto the snake and then do their magic. And that in their minds, the snake being there allows them to be powerful Mm -hmm. and to maybe connect with like divine feminine strength Mm -hmm. or something, you know, like, uh, I thought that was very interesting. That's really interesting to me. As as an espiritista, one of the things that we believe is that our personalities and the different parts of ourselves are really reflections or connected to the many spirits who walk with us and surround us. So like if I'm feeling particularly vengeful, I know exactly which spirit that's connected to. Mm. Or if I'm feeling particularly... Um, funny or I'm getting really into my card readings there are different spirits who are near me who like really activate and amplify that part of my personality Mm -hmm. and it feels very similar to what you're saying about 
the animal familiars doing the same thing. Yeah. That's so interesting. Isn't that interesting? I like that. I subscribe to that. Subscribe, like, mm -hmm. rate, review. Review. Five stars, please. I love that. <laughs> Should we do some spirit candy? Let's do some spirit candy. Spirit candy. Spirit candy. Channeled messages from our spirit guides. So I'm hungry. You got any spirit candy? <laughs> I got a I got a tasty one for you. Um, I actually love this. We called it Curiosity is a Blessing. And I like this because I feel like it relates to how our familiars tend to be curious when we are practicing our magic. They want to be involved in it and know what's going on. Um, remember that it is a blessing to be curious. Those who are frustrated by your questions are more frustrated with themselves for not having the answers or the wisdom that they should. Seeking clarity is not an attack, despite what some people will make you feel while you search for the truth. Knowledge is power. This adage is true in the realm of the living and the spirit. With the power of knowledge comes responsibility. The responsibility to act in alignment with what you now know. The responsibility to behave in ways that previous ignorances may have kept us from doing. Those threatened by curiosity desire, or perhaps already have, access to power, but often lack the knowledge an iron fist resting atop of a house of cards. Foundations that are flimsy, weak, and without rooting in land, people, and principle. Keep your spiritual foundations strong so that as your knowledge grows, your power grows in alignment with truth, love, wisdom, faith, and the desire for a kinder communal earth. Mm hmm. You love that. Stay curious, my friends. Stay thirsty, my friends. Mm -hmm. And stay skeptical of people who are annoyed by your curiosity. <laughs> yeah. They're not telling you everything. Mm -hmm. like, like, why are we so mad at kids who have so many questions? Because we don't have the kid. answers. Why are you, you don't want to answer their questions? Like, why mm -hmm. do you have a kid? Because <laughs> we don't have the answers. <laughs> And it's okay. They a lot of the time we mm -hmm. pray like, all right. I don't know. Yeah. When I don't know, I just tell them. I don't. I don't know. Let's find out. <laughs> Why don't you know? Why don't you know? Because I'm not perfect. <laughs> I am not an encyclopedia. <laughs> Should we take some questions? Yep. Okay. Um, I like this question. Where'd it go? How do you attract a familiar? Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, you can leave it treats, <laughs> literally <laughs> entice it. If you know the type of spirit you want to work with, mm -hmm. i.e. a bird mm -hmm. or a, a cat, maybe a stray cat that you've seen that you want to, you want to feed Leave them it. some water. Leave them some little warm food. milk. Mm -hmm. Leave them treats. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, if it's a, if it's a non- human or animal spirit, I would say you can still leave treats. <laughs> Absolutely, little offerings. <laughs> but also act in accordance to the spirit's will and mm -hmm. personality, right? Mm -hmm. Entertain it. Spirits, would, spirits yeah. love to be entertained. Dance, sing, karaoke. You got karaoke. the karaoke machine mm -hmm. for your kids. I would say just act in an authentic way to yourself and mm -hmm. those spirits will want to come to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Honestly, don't try to be something you're not. Mm -mm. Connect with your ancestry again. You, you end up in, like drawing in a spirit who yeah. probably isn't gonna vibe with you and your magic yeah. when you try to be something you're not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Adop or, or you know if you're uh, you want to adopt a pet mm -hmm. to become your familiar you could foster an animal and just you know when it's your baby you like do. you just know mm -hmm. you just do there's that like telepathic connection yeah. you just like oh, he's so cute oh my god <laughs> you just know I've got and it's a it's a 
adopting a pet or like finding your new family furry family member is a process it's not always just there's a lot of online things you can go to adopt a pet and you can look every day and just if you see something and you want to it's very competitive here in LA to adopt a fucking dog so (laughs) sometimes it doesn't work out and that means it wasn't meant to be Mm -hmm. so if maybe you're like I'm gonna buy that snake from that pet store maybe adopt one instead I don't know how it works with reptiles but or like a fish or whatever and it's gone the next day it was maybe it wasn't meant to be your your mm-hmm. pet or your familiar what's meant for you won't miss you yeah it won't mm-hmm. so if that's the, what you're talking about mm-hmm. then yeah i feel like um we can draw from the canon of the chilling adventures of sabrina here <laughs> 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 and like let whether you're sitting at your altar, whatever your sacred space is, like set the intention, let it be known to your good spirits, to the good spirits of the land, of your house. Um, Be clear with them. Like I would like to know who my familiar is and to build relationship with them. And I think you should be clear about A, like are you in a position to actually care for a living animal? Or are you looking for connection outside of that type of relationship? And once you establish that, once you put it out into the others, then you'll find that like the connections start to happen, whether it's finding the right pet through adoption or it's finally noticing a certain bird or a deer or whatever in your neighborhood, or it's seeing an animal in your dreams mm-hmm. um, by stating out loud that you desire to connect with a familiar spirit, you begin the process of drawing them to you. And it's very possible that they're already near. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a client who recently started dreaming about a dog and asked me about it. And I was like, oh my God, they're right next to you now. Their name is Gus. They're really protective. And she was like, that makes sense because the minute I first felt them, I was on a hike and I felt unsafe Mm. and I knew I needed to go in a different direction. Yeah. And the dog said, I could be a living companion if you're ready for me. Oh, isn't that cute? Yeah. Named Gus. Gus. (laughs) Um, That's cute. But I think like what Laura said about like having that connection, especially if you're looking to a living animal, like you'll feel it in your heart, that energetic. And the circumstances will just work out. It's just going to work out. Exactly. I've had dogs in my car Mm -hmm. and I had the shelter call. This is before this is I should tell the story. Before we got Fox, we had a dog named Ruby. And if you're watching, you can see her tattooed on my arm here. Mm. And uh, we were looking for a companion for Ruby. And I adopted this little terrier puppy from this place, went, picked it up, had it in my car. And they called me and said, oh, my God, the dog's already been adopted to someone else. Can you come bring it back? And I was like, what the fuck? Ouch. (laughs) But I didn't feel like I didn't feel like I was like, it's cute. Ruby likes it. Okay. Mm. So I had to bring it back and I was so upset. And then like two weeks later, Fox was astray at somebody's door and this old couple had him. It was a friend of a friend who knew we were looking for a little male dog because Ruby had a type (laughs) and it's Fox. Okay. (laughs) And he was living in their backyard and like this old man was like, his name's Scrappy and we're going to have to take him to the pound tomorrow if no one takes him because we don't know what to do. Yeah. So we went and we took him. And now he's my little familiar. So they find a way. They find a way to find you. He wasn't even in a shelter. He was just Mm. there. And then sometimes the relationship with your pet or your familiar doesn't always, it's not obvious at first. Mm -hmm. Like with Fox, it wasn't obvious. It's actually become more obvious and our bond has strengthened since Ruby passed. Yeah. Because it was he and I, I latched the fuck onto him and he latched onto me extra strength. Yeah. After that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, even before that, he was pretty attached. Yeah. But But he knew Ruby was boss. Yeah. 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 (laughs) And Ruby wasn't even a familiar. She was just her own magical entity. Yeah. Truly. (laughs) Hmm. You met her. You mm-hmm. met her, right? I got to meet Ruby. Oh yeah, she was like, vi- she's no one's familiar. She mm-hmm. was like magical. Mm-hmm. So, 
Maybe Fox was her familiar. Who knows? Totally. I could absolutely see that. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. (laughs) Yes. So there are all kinds of different relationships, you know? Mm -hmm. So many ways for it to happen. But just tell the universe that's what you want and you're ready. Yeah. And the universe will conspire to find a way. Mm Mm-hmm. Do you have any other questions? Can you ask someone to be a familiar or do they have to choose you? Like a person? It doesn't I don't specify. I don't think asking anybody to be a familiar nowadays is an easy task. Because <laughs> that's, there is a subservient connotation. <laughs> Within covens, I don't know how that works. Within kink, I don't know how that works either. But <laughs> <laughs> report back. Well, oh my God! Thank you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> thank you for watching. <laughs> Third Eye Bind. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and uh, be sure to leave us a message on the Third Eye Line. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Goodbye. Until next week. <laughs> thank you so much for listening. You can follow the podcast at Third Eye Bind Pod on Instagram. There, submit your questions via the third eye line by sending us a voice message or text DM. The show is available wherever you listen to podcasts and for you to watch on YouTube. Get early access to episodes and even monthly one-on-one sessions with us by joining our Patreon. Find us at patreon.com slash third eye bind. Third eye bind is produced and edited by Mike Realm. Hosted by Caitlin Grania and Laura Wong. Music by Mike Realm. Set design by Laura Wong. You can find Laura on Instagram at Lady Moon Co. And you can find Caitlin on Instagram at Spirit Garden Tarot.